Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church Summer Worship. It's 9.30, so it must be summer. Yes. It's not snowing? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait, wait till tomorrow? Is that what you're telling me? That's what it sounds like. Anyway, welcome to our Savior's Summer Worship this week featuring Brad Browers on organ today. I'm Pastor Chris Hill, Senior Pastor here at Our Saviors, and on behalf of Pastor Karen Lene, Jess Peterson, our Children, Youth, and Family Director, and Connie in the office, it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you here this morning, whether you are here in person or listening on WKLK or watching on YouTube or Facebook. However you are experiencing this worship, it is our goal to make it obvious and true. Your welcome here is unconditional and totally inclusive. For this Memorial Weekend service worship, there will be no sung liturgy as such. For the opening praise time, we will, as we often do, we'll be using a medley of songs and an arrangement from the hymnal for worship and celebration that includes My Country, Tis of Thee, America the Beautiful, and God of Our Fathers. Then in our lessons this morning for the sixth Sunday of Easter, we hear Jesus' promise of the Holy Spirit sent to God's people. This gift comes into relationship with God's people as protector, guide, comforter, counselor, helper, advocate, the one called alongside us. The Bible is alive with that promise this morning, and we get to see several glimpses of the heart of that promise as the Easter season now wraps up today. That very same Spirit calls forth our songs, and so we sing, God of grace and God of glory, would you rise together as you are able. Number 705, if you would like the music this morning. Confession and forgiveness this morning is an adaptation of the confession that was used at Synod Assembly the couple of weeks ago. 
We've been using it for the last couple of weeks, and I've rearranged it every week. So, anyway, God of all people, we confess all the ways in which we hurt each other. Remain silent, forget about the lost, turn our backs on our ancestors, and are blind to all the pain and brokenness around us. Our silence, our forgetfulness, our inaction, we confess to you. Lord, have mercy. God of love, we confess that our greed, arrogance, white privilege, and lust for power create so much hurt, exclusivity, and pain to so many. Our intolerance, our abuse of power, our love of self, we confess to you. Lord, have mercy. God of the universe, we confess our lack of love and care for the earth and all creation. We litter the lands, seas, and forests with both our physical and spiritual garbage. Our carelessness, our need for convenience, our over-busy lives, we confess to you, Lord, have mercy. Sisters and brothers in Christ, we are all loved by our Creator God. We are made new in and through the empty tomb of Jesus, in which we too have been made alive again. We are filled with the Holy Spirit that sustains and holds us even in our sin. Hear, receive, and believe the promise and assurance of our loving God that all your sins are forgiven, and you are freed to love, to serve, and to live in and for the healing, creating, and reconciliation in the world around you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we'll join together in our patriotic medley.
Do you join with me in prayer for this morning's prayer of the day? Bountiful God, you gather your people into your realm, and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word, that empowered by your spirit, we may love one another and the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. We got sun. <laughs> um, please read responsibly the assembly portion in the bold print. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. May God give us blessings, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. Our second reading is from Revelations 21, 10, 22, and 22 to 5. John's vision of New Jerusalem coming out of heaven provides continuity with God's past actions. Yet, in this new city, God's presence replaces the temple, and the glory of God and the Lamb supplants sun and moon. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and shoved me, showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in that city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices ab um, abomination of falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, which, with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gather with me as we prepare for the reading of the gospel with the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Once again, we find ourselves in Jesus' Last Supper, returning back to the promises that Jesus made to his disciples and the call that he made upon them in the night when he was betrayed. Instead of hearing more Easter stories, we hear of the promise of what happens 
after Easter. Jesus promises to be with them and to lead and to guide. And he's responding this morning to a question from Judas, not Iscariot, not the Judas who betrayed him, but another of his disciples named Judas, who had asked him, how will the world see you? How is it that the world will see you in us? And at John chapter 14, beginning with the 23rd verse, the gospel for the sixth Sunday of Easter, Jesus answers, those who love me will keep my word. And my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the youngest among us forward for this morning's children's sermon. Right there, perfect spot. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. There's some others coming from a distance. I'll wait for you, because I have something that I want to share with you guys this morning. It's so important that I even wrote it down this morning, instead of just sort of yakking. I, have, I actually wrote it down first, so I could share it with you. For all, so, that story I just told, that was when Jesus was, 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 it was the night just before his crucifixion. It was right at the very start of the scariest night of his life. He was about to be arrested. He was about to be killed. And even though he knows that he's going to rise again on Easter, he's not sure that his friends understand that, that he's there to help. I don't, he didn't know for sure that his friends knew how God's love was going to get him through that night or them through that night, through that scary time either. So he makes some promises. He promises his friends, and he promises us some promises about God's love. He tells them that the Holy Spirit, the very breath of God, the Spirit of God, will come to them and help them. You know that's true for you too. I want to be sure you know this. It's true for you. If you ever need God's help, you ask for it, and God's Spirit will be there for you. So, and then Jesus tells his friends, he tells his disciples that if they they ever need the Holy Spirit to guide them, it'll be there. That's true for you, too. If you ever need guidance, if you don't know which way to go, if you don't ever, if you don't, sometimes don't know what to do, you pray and God's Spirit will help you. It's true for you. If you ever need them, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, will come and guide you. And then he tells them, if you ever need strength, It'll be there for you. The Holy Spirit will bring you strength. And you know it's true for you too. If you ever need to be strengthened, if you ever feel like you, don't have, you can't do it by yourself, all you, you can pray and ask your parents or ask somebody to help you, and God's Spirit will give you strength too. And then he tells them that if they ever are scared or if they ever need comfort, The Holy Spirit will come and comfort them. And it's true for you, too. It's true for all of us. If ever we're sad or lost or alone or scared or cold or sick or naughty, God promises to send the Holy Spirit to comfort us. So those are the things I want you to remember. And there's some more. When we pray this time, we're going to do a different kind of prayer. It's a thing I call a motion prayer. And we're going to talk about how God God helps us. So can you do this? Helps us. God helps us. 
helps us and God guides us and the Holy Spirit strengthens us and the Holy Spirit comforts us. So instead of a word prayer, well, we're going to worry about it's sort of a motion prayer. So we can do those motions together, okay? So instead of folding our hands and closing our eyes, we actually need to have our hands ready to go and keep our eyes open so we can do it together, okay? So repeat after me. Dear God, if ever I need it, please send your Holy Spirit to help. Thank you for that promise. Dear God, you can pray along with me on this, okay? Dear God, if ever I need it, please send your Holy Spirit to guide. Thank you for that promise. Dear God, if ever I need it, please send your Holy Spirit with strength. Thank you for that promise. And dear God, if ever I need it, please send your Holy Spirit with comfort. Thank you for that promise. Amen. Thanks for coming up. It's kind of nice not having to go six pews back to get to the front. The Spirit is coming, brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus promises. Look what it means. Help. And you guys can do the motions too because motions help cement that stuff. Help. All right. Guidance. Strength. Comfort so much more. John tells us in both the vision of Revelation and in the gospel story, the biography, the Spirit is coming. Look what it means. God makes the holy home. It talks about in the, in the vision, there's this vision of the holy Jerusalem, the place where God lives, the, the city of God's dwelling comes down to earth. It's not something we have to climb up and get to. It's not something we have to be good enough to get to. God sends that holy city right into our very midst, right into our world, changing everything. The Spirit of God itself comes herself himself comes and dwells with us god makes that holy home the godly home with the world and then all the nations walk in the light of god's loving promise if there's anything that 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 resonated with me when i read this revelations text this week again and again and again all nations all nations all nations all nations not just some special few not just German Lutherans. <laughs> not just Lutherans. Every nation. Not just America. Not just Israel. All nations. That's the promise of the Holy Spirit. All nations walk in the light of God's loving promise. All people, all nations bring their glory into this Life. There is no night. There will be water of life and eternal food from the tree of life. This is the first I've read this Revelations text. Uh, I don't know. A gajillion, no, not that many. Uh, lots and lots of different, different times throughout my ministry. I've, I've read Revelations. I've studied Revelations. This is the first time it hit me. There is this promise that the tree of life is open for business. Now, if you go back to Genesis... The tree of life was f forbidden at the end of the, the temptation story. Adam and Eve were, were, were excluded, driven out of the garden, driven away from the tree of life. An angel with a flaming sword was set to guard it. Nobody gets close to the tree of life in Genesis. But here, everybody 
gets it. Everybody approaches it. There's, there's a f- 12 months of food, and the leaves are for the healing of the nations. That tree of life, once forbidden, once guarded by angels, flaming swords, is now open for business, and everybody comes. That's the promise. You heard it. Jesus says love will make it so. God's love opens the door to that relationship of God. Love invites God, the Creator, and Jesus himself right into your home. Jesus says, keep my words, and the word keep there is, is means to hold it close and to cherish it and to nurture it and to, and, and to cling to it. Keep my word, and Father and I are moving in. Your house. Tomorrow afternoon, we're coming. Baggage, forget about it. We're bringing our own. We're coming to your house. Can you imagine having God the Father and Jesus the Son hanging out in the next bedroom, sitting around your dining room t- table, watching YouTube with you? This is what we're talking about. It's a promise. It's a promise of God's love. We're moving in, God says to us. We're moving in. Imagine God always close enough to hold your hand when you dance or to comfort you hmm, when you cry. Jesus says that is the word of God's love. Hold it dear, and love brings God and Jesus right into your home. The Spirit is coming. Jesus promises, look what it means. We will understand, he says. When the Spirit comes, the Advocate comes, you'll understand everything Jesus said. Everything Jesus is trying to teach us. And yeah, I think it's a process. You know, it's in, in the life to come, it'll be boom, and you'll get it. But in the meantime, it's a process where you, we live into that word. We live into that love. We live into that presence and promise of, of God and Jesus hanging out in our home together. And, and you, you start, the more you love, the more you understand God. The more you love, the more you understand love. The more you understand what Jesus said about love and what God said about love, we will understand, he says, we will remember everything Jesus is trying to teach us. We'll be able to keep that teaching, hold it, that word, fully observe and obey the command to love. Jesus has already delivered that promise in the cross and in the resurrection, and that understanding, that living memory will be the peace that Jesus gives. My peace, he says, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Love brings peace. Now, the peace we get from the world, sometimes dearly bought with the sacrifice of men and women like those we remember on Memorial Day this weekend, that kind of peace is powerful, and it is a true blessing. But Jesus offers more. Jesus offers something else. Jesus offers a peace that nobody can take away. Jesus offers peace that, that, that no weapon can conquer. Shalom, he promises. Profound, holistic well-being, a well-being that is rooted in it is well with my soul kind of peace, Jesus offers. The Spirit offers. The Spirit is coming. Jesus promises. Look what it means. Our hearts don't have to be troubled. Our lives don't have to be worry-driven. We do not have to be paralyzed or misdirected by fear. Instead, rejoicing and praise of today's psalm, the song that we echoed back and forth, can be a daily theme song. Words like it and, and the emotion that goes with it and the joy that goes with it and the strength that goes with it and, and the, the help that goes, the help that goes with it and the guidance that goes with it, and the strength that goes with it, and the comfort that goes with it. That psalm can be the song that wakes you up in the morning with the bird song, and it can be the song that puts a a little little get up in your step throughout the day, and it can be the lullaby that lets you sleep well in the night. The Spirit is coming. Our lives can be a response to God's mercy instead of a reaction to God's judgment. The Spirit is coming. We can praise. God has blessed the world. We can praise. 
The Spirit is coming, Jesus promises. Look at what it means, the healing of the nations. It's in a process. It is happening. It's so easy to let the news and the bad news and the crankiness and the garbage out there weigh us down and cloud our eyes and, and, and cloud our hearts and minds, but God is winning. Love is winning. Every time you love, God wins. Every time we love, God wins. The healing of the nations is in the process of coming into this world right now. The abominations of the world, the falsehoods of the world, the curses of the world are in the process of being transformed into blessing and light and love. The Spirit is coming. Jesus promises. Look what it means. Whatever you are afraid of, the Spirit's already intervened. However you, are, you think you're incapable or weak or ineffectual, the Spirit is strength. Whatever you find too challenging to even contemplate, the Spirit is already conquering. Whatever dismays or discourages or disrupts your flow, the Spirit is restoring. Whatever wounds you, the Spirit is healing. The city of God, the very presence of God, the Lamb that is Jesus is soaking into the world. I see that, I see that vision that John saw of, of, the, of the holy city descending into the world. And I, it's, I, don't, I don't see it as this block that comes down and goes thunk. I see it as, a, as, a, as the Spirit of God that comes down and drapes itself around our world and around every soul and around every heart and around every hand and around every mind and around every body and around every nation and around every tree and around every rock and around every piece of reality and transforms it with the very breath of the love of God. That's the promise. And that is happening. And that is happening in your heart right this very moment. That holy city of God, the very presence of God, the Holy Spirit and, and God the Creator and Jesus is making its home in your heart even, even as you breathe. And that will feed it. And Scripture will feed it. And the promise of the Holy Spirit will help you. And the promise of the Holy Spirit will guide you. And the promise of the Holy Spirit will give you strength. And the promise of the Holy Spirit will comfort you. The city of God, the very presence of God, the Lamb that is Jesus, the Spirit that is the force of our relationship with the Creator is coming down out of heaven with all the light, all the truth, all the hope, all the words, all the peace the whole world will ever, ever, ever need. That you will ever, ever need. Do it with me. All the help, all the guidance, all the strength, all the comfort you can use. The Spirit is come. Notice the tense. Sounds like old cranky language. The Spirit is come. Jesus promises. Do you see? Do you see what it means?
As you are able, I invite you to rise together, confess what we believe together. This Easter season, we are using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Remind each other of the power and the reality of that peace. As we gather this morning's offering, a thank you to each and every one of you who has financially, prayerfully, with your time and talents, supported the work and ministry of this congregation. You need to know that it doesn't happen without you. It cannot happen without you. Your love at work, God's love flowing through you, sometimes flowing through your wallet, makes for this ministry, this mission to happen in this place and through us to the world around us. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do. little reminder to those who are listening on the radio or might be watching on YouTube, um, next week there will be no broadcast of this worship service whatsoever. Next week we will be hosting um, God's, the um, new wine for Godspell, and due to copyright restrictions we cannot broadcast that, um, that performance. So uh, on, the, on the radio they oftentimes play a, a rerun and uh, I'm not sure Cat7 is actually going to be back on the air by next week in any case. So, but they'll, we'll be back on Cat7 as soon as Cat7 is back on the air after they move their studios. So, but next week, no broadcast of any sort. Godspell, 9.30, it's going to be the entire show. It runs an hour and 45 minutes. There will be an, in, an intermission. Um, and in the part of that intermission, we'll be uh, gathering our church's offering and having a time of prayer. And then we'll return to the Godspell performance. And then they'll be collecting an offering afterwards next week as well. And there'll be coffee and goodies and all of that kind of thing in intermission and afterwards as well. So plan on that for next week. Uh, the food shelf and food bank offering then for this month, for June, excuse me, will be happening on the 16th. 
because Dr. Mano is going to be here on the 9th on Pentecost. Um, he'll be here sharing a little bit of what's been going on in Haiti. Um, that you may be aware that the mission trip from this area that normally goes to Haiti was canceled this year due to safety issues. Uh, Dr. Mano will be in country here for, a, for some time and uh, will be sharing with us on June 9th. Pentecost is the 9th, so on that day it would be awesome if you could wear red for that particular Sunday for our Pentecost, Pentecost celebration. Red on the 9th. So this morning, if you would stay for coffee, goodies are courtesy of the servers, but also our preschool New Horizons who had their program and wrapped up a very good year this past Thursday. So a lot of the treats are leftovers from, uh, from their celebration on Thursday. Um, Marty and a crew of folks will be in the entry area this morning to help you with electronic directory issues. If you want to get uh, your... your information updated if you want to get a picture taken to put in the electronic directory uh, we're continuing to move forward with that so that hopefully we can print a printed copy of a version of that but we need a bunch more people to get their pictures taken to get that in there so that crew will be available this morning so i want you to know as i mentioned in the in the message this is where we get fed for for love for god's love for god's spirit that promise to be real in our lives you believe that in with and under this bread and wine we get that nourishment we get that jesus we get that spirit you are welcome and encouraged to come to the lord's table this morning you do not need to be a member here you don't need to be lutheran jesus is here for you so you are welcome to come we'll be serving at two stations gluten-free if you need that as um, as the bread that'll be available at either station there's grape juice in the inner ring of either wine tray it does help to give those little glasses a kind of a twist and a wiggle to help them out as you are offered the blood of Christ um, you will give, be given your own choice either of the grape juice the lighter colored liquid in the inner ring or the wine you are all welcome would you rise together with me now trusting God's promise of new life we pray for the renewal of the church the world and all of creation Risen one, as you broke bread with the disciples and promised them the Holy Spirit, meet us now in this meal. Nourish us with that very same spirit to follow you, using our gifts to feed the hungry, tend the weary, all for your love's sake. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Risen Lord, we glorify you because you prevail upon us with your spirit. Convince us daily that you have called us to proclaim the good news of your grace. Let all who love you proclaim your word of life. Use our church and all her servants, like our bishops Tom and Elizabeth, as beacons to that loving word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen Lord, we glorify you because you feed us with the bounty of your creation. Bless the earth with enough rain and sunshine and sunshine and sunshine for the flourishing of orchards gardens fields and even dandelions give us thankful hearts as we share the fruit of the land with all who hunger hear us O god your mercy is great risen lord we glorify you because the leaves of your tree of life are for the healing of the nations bring an end to civil wars genocides terrorism violence wherever it occurs Overcome divisions of race, politics, and religion. Mend relationships across borders and across nations. Inspire our leaders with that same loving ethic. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen Lord, we glorify you because when our hearts are troubled and afraid, your promise, your promise is our answer. Visit us again with your peace. Comfort those facing uncertain futures, those who are unemployed or underemployed, those in difficult relationships, 
those facing chronic pain, those waiting for news about their health, those who are sick, those who need your healing touch for body, mind, or spirit, including those we name in our hearts before you that we know need your healing touch. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Risen Lord, we glorify you because your peace transcends any the world may attempt. We give you thanks for all who have died in service to nation. Inspire us to walk in your light and to live for the sake of freedom and justice for your children as a debt of gratitude for their sacrifice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Our risen Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread of the Passover supper, prayed and blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. The grapes are offered to the youngest members of our assembly as a reminder to them of the same story, the same power, the same love, the same grace. As we all prepare to receive this grace into our lives, please join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The ushers will invite you forward, beginning with the wings, coming down the center aisle. This table is ready for you.
As you are able, would you rise with me, please? So we give the Lord a prayer of thanks for this gift. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ broken for us. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into the wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord, amen. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in faith toward the Lord and in strength for one another. May it strengthen our love and make that Holy Spirit's promise flow freely through us to a world in need. And now may the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. Amen. And let us sing a new song unto the Lord. peace. Share that good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Thanks.